on today's show, the Dallas Mavericks get another take care of business win against the Hornets. Is Luka Doncic the best non-Curry three-point shooter in the NBA? Let's talk about all that and more on today's Locked On Mavericks. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Locked On Mavericks. NBA champions. He is the It's good. And the Mavericks have won the game. If you don't believe, you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. Welcome, you are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, where we let it ride. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform, leave a five-star review, like the video, and comment anything below. Let me know. Do you believe Luka Doncic is currently the NBA's best, non-Steph Curry, three-point shooter in the league. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, use that code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. And joining me, as always, on the post-game pod, what you got for me? Slightly bias. I'm thinking about it right now. It's, I'm racking my brain. I'm doing some very uh, last-second research here because there's a stat I want to find. But uh, I'm interested Just let in it ride topic. a little. Just let it ride a little bit while you do your research. I'm letting it ride. I'm letting it ride. Oh, we're letting it ride. Even against the Hornets, you got to let it ride. Remember how many times we got to let it ride last year? It was not as many as we, it, as we not expected. Not against the Hornets. And remember how many times they got to let it ride against the Hornets last year? Zero. <laughs> yeah. Zero. Oh, from man. the lowest point, from the lowest point of my Mavs media coverage fandom days, to now a really good p- point where we are at here. One yeah. calendar year can make a big difference, and this is where we are. So we'll talk about the Mavs getting this win. I want to talk about Daniel Gafford. He's really raised the floor for the Mavericks this season, and I want to talk about how we really saw it on display in this game. I want to talk about Kyrie's performance, filling up that box score. Three blocks for, for Kyrie. But we got to start here. We got to st- – and then we'll do, we'll do Mavs and Clippers and playoff scenarios at the end, too, where we'll talk about what's ahead, and we'll talk about where the Mavericks are and scenarios and all that kind of stuff. Uh could the Mavericks play a different team? <laughs> we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but let's start here. Luka Doncic starts this game in just a way that only Luka Doncic can, really. I mean, there's not really anybody else in the NBA. I guess Curry can do this. I guess, you know, you look at, like, a guy that can get real hot. Like, I guess a Donovan Mitchell maybe could do this. A There's, there's not, like, a lot of players where you just go, man, they just went scorched earth, just destroyed you scoring in the first quarter. And Luka... First quarter, 21 points, five, <laughs> five threes he hits in that first quarter. And he was just absolutely, I saw you tweet this, a master class. It really was just a Luka master class tonight. Yeah, it was. It was just picking apart the defense. And uh, it's the Luka dilemma. Are you going to double team him? If not, and especially if he's hitting threes, then good luck ever stopping him from getting a bucket at all. Because really it feels like if uh, – you don't double. The only time Luca doesn't torture you is if he's not hitting his threes and he's, yeah. you know, like two of 10 from three. But if he's going off from three, there's just generally nothing you can do. And then once they did start doubling or start sending help, I mean, some of the passes, I think you could tell deep down the Mavericks didn't. Uh, I'm trying to watch my words here because I wouldn't say respect <laughs> the Hornets, but it almost felt like they came out or like, we're going to have some fun tonight. That's maybe the best way is they thought we're going to have some fun tonight. Some of the passes Luca threw were just uh, insane. <laughs> and it feels like, I mean, he had, what, 10 assists in this game? Could have easily yeah, he got, had. Yeah, he, good game. He got to a triple-double. Not a 40-point, but he got to a triple-double. Yeah, just an okay game for Luka. 39-point triple-double. <laughs> Didn't get to 40. So and that actually is a knock on his MVP candidacy, I think, tonight. If you don't show the voters this game. Yeah, really. Like, he didn't get to 40. You, you got to get yeah. to 40 if you want to win the MVP, apparently. like goal Against posts, this Hornets just... team? Well, well not, not any other player. Just Luka, though. That's right. That's right. Uh, Jokic, first in passes per game in the NBA, by the way. Just first in glorp. <laughs> but Luca, by the way, he does 21 points in the first quarter in nine minutes. Yeah. <laughs> didn't even need didn't even need the last three minutes in that quarter. And he had two assists and he could have had a couple more. But uh, it just it just when he sets the tone, when he comes out, when he's hitting his threes, you, you said it. They, they can't be guarded. He, he yeah. gives them every option. He already has every option in front of him. And so when he hits the three, which is like. Not necessarily his first option, but if they're going to go one-on-one against him, he's going to be like, all right, fine. And when the Hornets start Grant Williams at five at the, at yeah. the center position, 
Remember Grant Williams? Remember our old buddy Grant Williams? They started him at the five because Mark Williams has been out. Nick Richards has kind of disappointed them this season. They got Pokashevsky, who, like, I don't know, did not look like a center or any kind of big <laughs> at all in this game when I was watching him. And so Luca was like, all right, I'm just going to chuck up threes because Daniel Gafford's, like, eff it. Daniel Gafford's down there somewhere to get the offensive rebound yeah. uh, or to, to tap it out or whatever. The Mavs get 16 offensive rebounds in this game. They get, what, five in the first quarter, and the Hornets got zero in that first quarter. And, like, it, that's a good game plan. <laughs> it's a good game yeah. plan if you just get outside somebody. Like, all right, we're just going to chuck some threes up. And I, and I also think, too, because uh, Luca put up a – How many points uh, do you have, like, the stats? How many shots did Luca get in the first quarter? Because it felt like oh, a, for, it felt like a ton. First but, quarter he took twelve. He took twelve. He took nine threes. He took twelve yeah. threes in the first half, and that's the most in a half he's ever taken. So I think you could look at that, and if you weren't watching, think there was some ball hogging going on. I, Luca does this to set up defenses. He wants you to come out and help. Yeah. He I wants you to come out and help, and he's going to force you to do it by saying, "Hey, if 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 you let me, I'm going to shoot thirty threes in this game, and I'm going <laughs> to put up seventy five points. Like I'm, I will do it." And so the defense starts coming up, starts playing high, and then Gafford gets just post up attempts against these little children, basically, to Daniel Gafford. And <laughs> he just gets to have a field day again. Children. We're on another Daniel Gafford streak here. Oh, love love me some Daniel Gafford. We'll we'll talk about him because I think that his his ability to raise the floor for the Mavs has really changed what they can do. But looking in this game, finishes 39 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, just four turnovers. He hit eight of 17 from three. And it leads me to this question. Is he the best three-point shooter in the NBA? That's not Steph Curry. Steph Curry is like, you know, the greatest three-point shooter in NBA history. So you just put him yeah. to the side for a second, okay? Like, there's just no, he's not, you can't assail that. Luca is taking the second most threes in the NBA this season behind Steph. He's taking 10.6 threes a game. Steph is taking like 11.8, just insane. Steph's shooting 40% on those threes, <laughs> takes really hard ones. Everyone knows he's going to take every three. Like, it's insane how well he's shooting. Yeah. Luca, though, 38%. And of the players that are shooting at least seven a game, here are the guys that are shooting better than Luca that are taking at least seven a game. Cause you got to get some volume in there. It can't just be like somebody taking five or, you know, six. It's like, I, I did at least seven. Right. The only guy shooting better than Luca right now, D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. CJ McCollum. Okay. Paul George. All right. Kyrie. Okay. Hey. Dante DiVincenzo. Eh. Steph Curry mentioned him. Larry Markkinen. Yeah. Tyler Hero. Yeah. Duncan Robinson, all right. Anthony Simons, Clay Thompson, and then Luca. That's it. Those are the only ones shooting better than him at the at a, at a seven per game volume than Luca. Which leads me to be like, all right, Luca is starting to hit his catch and shoot threes now this season, and he's always been able to hit his pull up. And the, and how many players on that list can hit a step back three at all? Really, like there's a couple on there, but I mean, I think Luca may be the best three point shooter in the NBA. That's not Steph Curry. Yeah, and I, I don't know if it's even really close to me, honestly. So I'm looking at some numbers here. Basketball index, and you you guys probably, even if you don't know who they are, you've probably seen screenshots yeah, of, their, of their of uh, their stats. Like they do the LeBron stat, I'm pretty sure, is their big one. So if you've seen that one, that's where you get that from. But they have uh, a shooting talent grade that they give out, and a, a lot of stuff goes into it, your shooting percentages, but also the – degree of difficulty on your shots the uh the the create your shot creation and they have luca as the second best in that score mm. behind steph curry mm. uh and just a little bit ahead of paul george so by that i would say yes because you have to factor in that luca is shooting these 10 threes a game and hitting at the percentage he hits and i, I would venture to guess 80 percent of those are threes that he's creating himself and they're difficult step back threes are the defender right on him He's not shooting open catch and shoot threes. Even Steph over the course of games, and granted, you know, Steph's motor is something else. So even when Steph's open, yeah. it comes after he's ran off of 15 screens and has just been running nonstop for the last, you know, uh, 20 seconds. But uh, like, it, it is crazy that the degree of difficulty that uh, of Lucas shots <laughs> and the fact that he hits at such a high clip and he's shooting 42% on catch and shoot threes this year, which is one of the best in the league. So Luka, yeah, that, that's, that's been the big, that's been the big difference with Luca yeah. is that he's, he's finally hitting those catch and shoot threes and uh, just, yeah, Steph is taking five catch and shoot threes a game. Larry Markin, for example, is taking seven. Dante DiVincenzo is taking seven. Clay Thompson's taking seven catch and shoot a game. Like there it's a, there are different kinds of shooters. And so that's why I put Luca up there. Cause he can hit all kinds of different types of threes and create his own and, you know, 
owning the step back three in this era of, of the NBA. And like, yeah, I think that he has become that this season. And that's one of the reasons why he should be an MVP candidate should be, should be the MVP really is because he's really taking that step forward and he's unguardable when he does it, why he's leading the league in scoring and all that. I mean, you can bind everything because I saw a stat from NBA university today. He posted a, a screenshot of, of people who lead the league in drives per game. Luke with 18 yeah. drives per game, third most among the top 10, in drives per game, Luca has the highest field goal percentage on drives. So you combine everything. Like once he gets to the rim, he's unstoppable. He's a mid-range maestro. Posting up, he's unstoppable. And now he's turned himself into, I think, inarguably. I don't know if you can argue it this season. The second best three-point shooter in the league when you factor <laughs> in everything that comes with it. On top of being, if not the best playmaker in the NBA, the second best playmaker behind Jokic. It's like. I, I mean, you're, you're talking what about... What else does he have to do? <laughs> uh, that's literally it. I mean, I've, I've reached the point, and I don't want to say names. I was listening to some podcasts earlier, and they were like, yeah, I think I am going to ultimately go with Shea second for MVP. And I'm like, I'm being gaslit. Like, there's no... there. I just can't, in good faith, understand how Four. we're doing this still. Four wins separates the Thunder and the Mavericks. It's not like this Thunder team yeah. is like 10 wins ahead of the Mavericks. The Mavs are what? Yeah, four, four games, four and a half games back from the Thunder. It's not like they're like running away with everything. They have and the sixth the, best record in the league. And the Thunder, yeah, the Mavericks do. And the Thunder have had no injuries at all to all their guys. Now, what they're doing has been great. I think Dagnalt should definitely be up there for coach of the year, for sure. Like, they, he's definitely taking this. And SGA should be first team All-NBA and all that. Like, But I, I think what Luka's doing is a harder thing, and I think that what Luka's doing is a more impressive thing. And I think that all that, you know... I didn't want to get into MVP stuff. Like we're just going to <laughs> at this time of the year, but uh, but I think he's absolutely the second best three point shooter in the NBA, which is a wild thing considering where Luca has been the last couple of years. So yeah. coming up, let's talk about this game. Let's talk about Daniel Gafford, how he raises the floor for the Mavericks. I think in the acquisition, this is one of the reasons why the Mavericks have been so good since the trades and since the turnaround. We'll talk about all that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time lets you go and check out the seats that you want before you go to the thing that you want to see. They have all kinds of stuff. I went and I saw uh, Broadway show Les Mis, and I used Game Time. You can do uh, sporting events. I've done Dallas Wings games and gone to Game and, and used Game Time. All kinds of stuff you can get on Game Time. Check out they have last minute deals. Save up to sixty percent off buying last minute tickets for sports. If you're on your way there, they're gonna have tickets for it. You might as well just go on the way there and see where they drop to all kinds of events and stuff. They have, they have a bunch of uh, events and things that you can check out. Go check out uh, all their concerts. They have on there as well. Shows. They've got the masters. They've got all kinds of things on game time. Check out the zone deals, all in pricing. So you can toggle that and see exactly what you're going to pay at checkout. Cause those fees are, are really annoying when they like surprise you at the end. But if you turn on that all in pricing, you'll see it exactly how it is. They also give you game day ticket coverage. You're Purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Now do this. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Again, LOCKEDONNBA, L-O-C-K-O-L-A, hold on, I can spell. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem that code, download the Game Time app today, lowest prices, Last minute tickets guaranteed. That was a tough oh. one. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. No, it's not. I struggled through that sentence. <laughs> That's a Tracy Morgan classic from 30 Rock. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of this show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. Appreciate each and every one of you for checking in on the show. Check out the Lockdown Sports Dallas YouTube channel, the 24-7 stream on Amazon Fire TV, as well as YouTube. All right, Slightly, let's talk about this game. Gave Luca his props, gave Luca his flowers. Let's talk about Daniel Gafford. 26 points, second on the Mavs, seven rebounds, bunch of other tip-outs, two blocks, a steal, an assist, 12 of 12 from the field in under 25 minutes. He has become this player that has raised the floor for the Mavericks against all these bad teams. He just feasts. And this is one of the reasons why I'm like no longer concerned about the Mavericks when they play against some of these bad teams. Uh, our friend, Matt Moore from locked on nuggets action network and locked on NBA posted this stat earlier today that the Mavericks before this game tonight beat their opponents under 
beat 92% of their opponents that are under 500 since the all-star break. 92%. It's probably like 94, 95 now with this win. I'm and like the loss was that's the second, uh, that's the, we'll have to go back and check, but that's the second, um, that's the second best mark in the league. Denver's a hundred percent since the all-star break. They've beaten a hundred percent of their opponents. Um, and so I think that the, I think one of the reasons why the Mavericks have been this good is that they have Daniel Gafford. Yeah. And Daniel Gafford can raise the floor for your team. And he just feasts on some of these teams. Look at some of his best games as a Maverick. Charlotte tonight, 26 points. Utah, 24 points, five assists. Chicago, 20 points. Detroit, 17 points, four blocks. Washington, 16 points, 17 rebounds, five blocks. He raises the floor for the Mavericks. Yeah, 100% agree. Because two, you play a team like tonight in uh, Charlotte, who's incredibly small. We already mentioned that they started Grant Williams at the five. That automatically gives you uh, uh, an exit valve, somebody to go to late in possessions. If, uh, you know, if uh, whatever you're doing originally is not working, you have this huge size advantage down low. And it gives you that benefit on the offensive glass where, you know, late possessions, we got to throw up a shot. And that did not happen at all tonight. The Mavericks got every single look they wanted offensively, especially early on in the game. You have that offensive rebounding threat. And, the energy, like that, that's part of it too. Is Daniel Gafford's a very energetic player. When he dunks, he dunks violently. When he blocks a shot, he does it violently. He screams, he gets the crowd going. You know, that galvanizes the troops. That gets the, the you know, that's if you've ever played sports with a, with a guy like that, you know, that that gets you going too. And he when he turns to you and screams with those dreamy eyes, and you're like, I'm in, let's go. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I got to do this for you, buddy. Or <laughs> I want to be screaming too. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> In games like these where it's late in the season and you you're pretty much locked into the playoffs and you're going up. I mean, this was the oh, Hornets last home game of the season. You know, like they could have came out with a little a little juice and they did one, two, but, three Cancun. They could, yeah, they were one, two, three Cancuning it. That's what they came the out with instead. It was, was third quarter. They had a little third quarter. They did have a little juice. They did. And it, that, a lot of that was Mavs trolling. And you could just literally see the Mavs turn the switch off defensively. Like they were like, all right, this game is done. We're done trying now. Now that you brought it up, though, I'm looking at the Mavs schedule, and I don't think they've lost to an under 500 team. I think that that, that stat may be wrong because I think the last one they lost to was the Grizzlies, January 9th. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at it too, and I was I was clicking on these games because I was like, I I, did Indiana was Indiana ever below 500? Like the Sixers get below 500. Philly was the other one that I was thinking about, and then there's not. I mean, was it Warriors? The Warriors weren't right. No, there's no the Warriors at that point were already beat Toronto. The Cleveland game felt like it was, <laughs> felt like it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think that it's, this may be like, a, and they lost to, if I go back to like January 1st, they lost to Utah and they lost to Memphis since January 1st. So maybe, yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's maybe since it's January 1st they did it. Um, And then they lost to Houston before that, but I don't know. So, it, so either way though, the point still stands. The Mavericks have not lost to, to teams that are under 500. They haven't lost to any since the trades basically. And yeah. so that one of those reasons is because of Daniel Gafford and what he can bring to this team and the way that he just changes them. And they haven't had Derek Lively now, and they haven't really missed him that much because they have Daniel Gafford. And, and then whenever you, especially against inept teams and, and offensively inept teams, with the, which the Hornets have been very bad offensively yeah. since the trade deadline, um, when it, or really the whole season, but especially since the trade deadline, is when you have a rim a deterrence like Daniel Gafford down low, that takes one layer out pretty much entirely for a team like Charlotte. And it's just, it's just really hard for them to generate anything outside of that. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's great having a guy like that and don't sleep on the energy side of things. Cause we've seen this team sleepwalk through games like this a yes. lot. And they don't do we it. Have, and it's one of the reasons why they're only playing Gafford like 24 minutes sometimes. And they're like, all right, we're, we don't want to play you that much because we need that force. We need that intensity. We need the, the screaming. Like we need the yeah. you know the huge dunks to get us going. Like to get us excited. Get those rebounds that you're not supposed to get in the AAC. Like at Mavs home games, when he gets an offensive rebound that like he's not supposed to get, you know those rebounds that you have to fight for and he gets it. It it makes the crowd like perk <laughs> up as almost as much as a three sometimes. Like they, they go they go oh. It's like they love offensive rebounds. They love those like extra possessions. It is like, whoa, I've, I've never seen this. <laughs> I have never seen one of these. They can do this. I've I've heard I've heard tell of these. <laughs> <laughs> a 
Coming up, let's talk about the Mavs playoff scenarios. Let's talk about their clinching scenarios. And let's talk about uh, the Clippers because it seems to be the opponent the Mavs may play. Let's talk about all that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a service that will help you walk through some of the hardest things in life. There are certain things in life that are just super hard to, to walk through. And not everybody goes through all those super hard things that you can name off the top of your head, but everybody has something. Every single person just straight up has a hard thing that they go through in life because it is the hardest thing for you, whatever it is. And you don't have to say, well, I haven't been through that much. If you have anxiety, if you have something that you are concerned about, even just the state of the world, Sometimes I get on with a therapist and I just start talking about, man, if I have to hear one more story about this political thing or this other thing or this, you know, natural disaster in the world, like if I have to hear one more thing about that and you just sit and talk about that and it feels so good to get that off your chest. Therapy is different for everybody. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports teams. If it's the Hornets, then maybe you don't. It's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're starting to, if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible, suited to your schedule. I love using BetterHelp because I can change it around. My schedule is crazy all the time. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash Locked on NBA. Uh oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is, huh? Anybody? That was that was hard. All right, slightly. What? It's game day. They play the Heat tonight. No, I was saying the Hornets jab. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to personally extend an apology to our, our friends and colleagues over at Locked on Hornets. There you go. I was not familiar with your game, although I do listen to your show because it's my job. <laughs> but uh, Doug Branson and Walker Mail are doing a very hard thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's one of the hardest shows, I think, to do out there. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, it's rough there. And that, from what I, I know, <laughs> it's a great, like a legit great basketball city. So I hope that they get oh. some, uh, some, some fun stuff in the near future. I was sending out the preview today to all the subtexters and I was like the Hornets this season with LaMelo. And I was expecting like it to be like decent or like a, at least like encouraging, like, Oh, yeah. they're this with the mellow and without him, they're this with, with LaMelo this season, they're seven and 15, <laughs> which is like better for them. And they were a minus 8.6 net rating without him. They're 12 and 50. Now <laughs> they have a negative 12 net rating. Yikes. Brutal. I just sneezed, but I had to mute it because I'm getting made fun of for my sneezes. You did really great. That was, it was very seamless. <laughs> did yeah. not come through on the air. The Muted Mavs. on two platforms. Wow. The, look at that. That's versatility right there. That's being able to do multiple things at once. MVP of the pod right there. Yep. The uh, <laughs> While I'm making fun of Hornets fans in the middle of an ad. The, uh, the Mavs clinching playoff scenario. So we're recording this before we know if the, if the uh, Suns or the Pelicans lose tonight. And if they do, the Mavericks clinch six. They will not be in the play-in. If the Mavs win against the Heat on Wednesday, they will not be in the play-in. We know that. They'll clinch then. But it's looking like the odds are the Mavericks are going to be in fifth, and they're going to play the Clippers. Initial thoughts on just the ending scenarios. If you, you're like, hey, wait, watch out for this spot, or is there anything like that? It seems like I, I'm, I was looking at it a second ago, trying to figure out what could possibly happen to – avoid that and I, I can't quite even figure it out I mean it would have to be the Mavericks losing enough games to fall into six because I don't think the Clippers can get out of the four five so it's I know a lot of the tiebreaker against both those teams yeah I mean a lot would have to happen and, and that's why pretty much every like playoff prediction place has it at like 98 percent that the Mavs are playing the Clippers in round one which is just hilarious <laughs> It's the only thing that's like certain right now is that the Mavs will play the Clippers yeah. in the first round. Like everybody, uh, everything else is like 60%, 50%. This one's like 95% Mavs Clippers. Darian Vizier locked on Clippers and I have already been texting like, Hey, what are the games to watch about this team? Let's get together for a crossover. I'm like, Hey, can I stay at your place? When we go to <laughs> and they play there. Uh, so yeah, uh, it, it's, it's coming and it's coming back. And I see a lot of Mavs fans that are like confident in this matchup and like, of the top four, you'd want to play the Clippers of those yeah. top four teams, right? Like, okay, if you're going to be confident about one of them, I think it would be the Clippers. But I'm not going into the Clippers and saying, all right, this is a guaranteed, guaranteed dub. Like, they got this sweep or five-game series. I don't know if you heard this stat yesterday on the show. For the season, not just since the trades, for the season, there's only two 
sets of duos that they are better on offense and defense than Luka and Kyrie have been this season. Do you want to take a guess on who they are? Like their offensive rating and their defensive rating when they're on the court is better than Luka's offensive rating and defense rating when Luka and Kyrie are on the court. I'll guess James Harden, Paul George as one. That's a good guess. You got half of that one. James Harden is is in both. It's, it's Kawhi and Paul. It's Kawhi and Paul George. Oh. I thought that was almost too easy. I thought it would be, be, <laughs> thought it would be a, a trick question. Well, no, just duos in general. It's Kawhi and Paul George, and it's Jokic and Murray. They're oh. the only duos in the NBA the entire season that are better on both offense and defense than Luka and Kyrie when they're on the court together. Mm-hmm. So, like, you're going up against a duo that they have been very good when those two guys play, and we've got to watch for Kawhi, and we'll be on Kawhi watch, and I, this is something that I don't like is when you're like, is this guy going to play? Is he not going to play? What's he? And then he shows up and scores 45 in game seven. And you're like, Oh yeah. I mean, it's, there's no easy outs. So it's not like you're sitting there like, Oh my God, I, I, I'm shaking in my boots. This Clippers team, like you could be confident in this Clippers team. Cause look, the reality is they might have peaked at the absolute wrong time. I mean, they've since February yeah, they 1st, were. They are 19 and 13, which is fine. They have the 28th best defense over that stretch. 28th in the entire NBA. Like they've been treading water defensively now for so long. And Kawhi is, I mean, what's up with him? I, are Clippers fans freaking out about this? I feel like I would be. He's missed like five straight games with a knee thing. Yeah. I, I was, I've been texting Darian, locked on Clippers about this. And I was like, hey, is this like, a precautionary thing for him. Cause it was, I texted him when it was one of the first games he was going to be out. And he was like, Hey, I don't, I don't think this is precautionary anymore. Like when he was out for a couple of games, I mean, dude, whenever he tore his ACL and that series against the jazz, if I'm remembering correctly at first, they were like, Oh, Kawhi's day to day with some like knee thing that he had. And everyone's like, Oh, that's terrible. And then a couple of days later, it's like, actually he tore his ACL. So that well, the, the, the thing with him and the reason why it's one of these like weird things with him all the time is because he has his own doctors and he's got his own like thing. This is one of the reasons why it didn't like it didn't work out in San Antonio and then in Toronto. And now he's with the Clippers and it's been kind of weird. And so, yeah, I mean, if they don't have Kawhi, I, I might pick the Mavs in five. <laughs> I mean, it's we're like two weeks away and Kawhi has not played tonight he's he's missing as of the time of recording this. The game hasn't started yet, but he's missing the game against the Suns. That's so he's out fit- tonight. Yeah, his fifth straight missed game. Like at this point in the season, that's every injury, every even if it's a small thing, is like uh hello. Or let's not forget, knock on I'm knocking on glass currently. Luca got that Can, calf strain. Why do you say knock on glass? Someone we, someone asked me that in the comments, and I don't know why you do that instead of wood. Knock on glass, save your ass. Wow. Is that a Texas thing? No idea. I don't <laughs> I'm like shocked that. I mean, it's there's like I I've been gaslit on this now because I've been hurt. No, I feel like it. you're gaslighting me. No. Knock on glass. No, everyone's ga- everyone's no, gaslighting knock on me. Wood. Everyone, no, I know it's knock on wood, but I've heard knock on glass too. I'm not saying okay. knock on glass is the only one, but I, no one's ever heard it. Anytime I say it, everyone's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Did I like imagine this?" And now it's in you my have a, you have a personal Mandela effect on the on this phrase. I guess so. Can we, oh wait, speaking of Mandela effect, can we talk about the people like uh who was it on who was it on uh. Steve Smith. Steve Smith today on yeah. NBA on NBA TV that said the Mavs won one of those Mavs Clippers series. The reason why I think some people think this and like some people on podcasts have said it. There's a another one Matt Moore posted on Buckets, the Buckets show that someone said that the Mavs won one of these series because that was such a moral victory for the Mavericks to win to go to Game Seven, yeah, against that Clippers team. Starting the players they were, it was a Brunson that was getting played off the floor, Porzingis who was completely checked out and scored like yeah. 13 points a game Ugh. against them. Boban started three games for them. Like Dude. It, Willie Colley Stein played real minutes in that, in that series. I mean, it was insane that the Mavericks took that Clippers team to seven games. And they had that crazy like game three where they were up by what 20 yeah. or whatever. And uh-huh. oh, that was that was a brutal memory. But uh yeah, it was such a moral victory that now people have just turned that into a win for the Mavs. Yeah, I think I, I do think that's funny because when you hear the narrative of those two series, it's like Luca owns the Clippers and all of this, and it's like, <laughs> it's like oh, time. they lost twice. <laughs> but but yeah, it's like you compare those teams. Let's not forget, I know for sure the bubble season, the Clippers were the championship favorites entering that postseason. I don't know if the same was true in the 2021 season, but I I've said this before, and I'll, I will die on this hill. That Clippers team in 2021 wins the NBA Finals if Kawhi does not tear his ACL. Like I feel yeah. very well, strongly and, about that. And, 
And I kind of feel like one of the reasons why he did tear it, and I'm not a doctor, I'm not Brian Suter or anything, but <laughs> it's because he had to work so hard against yeah. the Mavericks in that first round series that he just, he worked himself. And that's when they were still sitting him a bunch and like, mm -hmm. and all that. And so like, he hadn't worked that hard in months. <laughs> and all of a sudden, yeah. of a sudden they're, they're like, hey, go out here and beat Superman. And he had an insane game seven. And yeah. then they end up, you know, he ends up tearing his ACL sadly. And then we don't get to see what that Clippers team can do. Yeah. And Kawhi in that series, in the four games that the Clippers won in the fourth quarter, he didn't miss a shot ever. He had 100, 100, 100 shooting splits in the fourth quarter of the four <laughs> Clippers wins. I mean, just he, he was, was out of different by planet. Seth Curry and Maxi. <laughs> I mean, Bobon got 30. This is why I don't even like care about those series at all. Bobon got 31. Bobon wasn't on the court for five <laughs> minutes. He got 31 minutes in a game seven. <laughs> Bobon. I mean, love the guy. It, love the guy so much, like with all of my heart. Uh, but man, Trey Burke, Trey Burke had eight minutes off the bench. Bubba Burke in game seven. <laughs> There's just not a comparable KP was a little baby that I, I honestly will never root for KP because of that. I'm sorry. Like I, way, I hope the, he stays he, healthy and stuff, but it, it wasn't about the, the season when he got traded. It was about, is that about that playoff series and how he ended yep. that season that we were, that we all got soured on him and we're like, all right, this is it. And soon as he got yep. traded, the vibes completely changed on the team. Like it, yeah, I don't even think he was a bad. I don't even think he was like a bad teammate or did anything. We've rehashed that a million times about if him or him and Luca friends and all. It's like just didn't work, and he just didn't accept his role, and he thought he was better than Luca when when he first came over, and then realized he wasn't, and then slowly like didn't accept what his role was. And Rick Carlisle was like, "Hey, go stand in the damn corner if you're not gonna like accept who you are." Yeah, I mean that's that's why I don't think you could even look at that series as like any indicator of how this series would go, unless it's like you know what playoff Kawhi is all about. So you're going to have yeah. to bring it. If Assuming he's healthy, you're going to have to bring it. And, and I have to ask, I, I always ask Avs fans this, who are like really concerned about this series. You know, I, I don't think it's going to be like a sweep or the Mavs should easily win it. It's, it would be an incredibly tough, hard fought series, but outside of Kawhi Leonard PTSD, I mean, what's the main concern? Like what's the big, St st the, 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 the big thing that's making you so concerned about a matchup like this because since the all-star break the Mavs are just a better basketball team than the Clippers they yeah. just are the the, the the record is going to be mentioned a bunch of times Mavs are two and or one and two against this Clippers team this season all those games happen before yeah. Christmas like, yeah, you can't even matter. count any of those games like I'm not even going to go back and watch them I don't think because no. it just doesn't matter uh, and the Clippers are totally different too like they they've got some guys as well uh, and the Clippers are different than those those past playoff runs as well Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know, I guess James Harden going off and like James Harden will have a couple of good playoff moments and then he'll just completely like poop the bed at the end of the, his runs, but he'll still have some good moments. He won those two games for the Sixers yeah. last season. True. Um, so he'll, he could have a good moment. And like, it's, it's PJ on one of the wings. It's Derek Jones jr. On the other one. So that means you've got Kyrie or Luca guarding it, guarding James Harden, right? Like that's kind of what you're left with. It's probably Kyrie. Yeah. So like that whole that whole system, and I know Kyrie can could handle it, and like I know that the Mavs like they'll run a bunch of screens, and the Mavs will just have to run their defense. But like that does worry me if that if you know that could happen, they start running them. Yeah, I'm nervous about that offense because I think that they can they can really score. And if the Mavs defense starts looking like it did against the the Pacers a couple weeks ago, like that could really that could really concern me. But but I but. Kawhi, man, there's that's the big question. We'll do a yeah. lot. Of, we'll do a lot more preview and all that. I just wanted to talk about this first because it really does seem like this, this is happening. So yeah, there I, you go. I don't know. I don't know how it wouldn't happen at this point. It's very, it's very hard to like. The, the percentages are so small. So yeah. Uh, but coming up tomorrow, we will do the Mavs Heat game. Who knows who's going to play in that game? Yeah. <laughs> because everything's kind of wrapped up for the Mavericks. We'll see that. But we'll do that tomorrow. Slightly now, I'll be back, guys. Thanks for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace out. Boom. Knock on glass. Knock on glass.